Hello there everyone, welcome to Edupedia World 9th grade computer applications video lecture series. I'm Ubeka Wendibona and from this episode we are going to cover up database designing. A properly designed database provides you with access to up-to-date, accurate information. A correct design is essential to achieving your goals and working with a database. Therefore, investing time to learn the principles of good design makes sense. This episode provides guidelines for planning a database, so you will learn how to decide what information you need how to divide that information into the appropriate tables and columns and how those tables relate to each other. Before you create your first database, you should understand this. In the end of this lecture, you are much more likely to end up with a database that meets your needs and also that can easily accommodate change. Certain principles guide the database design process. The first principle is that duplicate information, also called as redundant data, is bad because it wastes space and increases the likelihood of errors and inconsistencies. The second principle is that the correctness and completeness of information is important. If your database contains incorrect information, any reports that pull information from the database will also contain incorrect information. As a result, any decisions you make that are based on those reports will be misinformed. In a good database design, we can find following characteristics. The first one is it divides your information into subject-based tables to reduce the redundant data. And also it provides access with the information it requires to join the information in the tables together as needed. And also, it supports to ensure the accuracy and integrity of your information. And the last one is, it accommodates your data processing and reporting needs. And now we are at the job. If you follow these 8 steps in this process, you can come up with a good database design. The first step, determine the purpose of your database. This helps prepare you for the remaining steps. The second step, find and organize the information required. So gather all of the types of information you might want to record in the database. The third step, divide the information into tables. Divide your information into major entities or subjects such as product, order. So each subject then becomes a table. Fourth step, turn information into columns. Decide what information you want to store in each table and each item becomes a field and it is displayed as a column in the table. So, for example, an employee table might include fields such as the last name and the hire date. Fifth step. Specify primary keys. Choose each table's primary key. The primary key is a column that is used to uniquely identify each row. For example, product ID or order ID are the primary keys of product table and order table. Sixth step, set up the table relationships. Look at each table and decide how the data in one table is related to the data in the other table. Add fields to tables or create new tables to clarify the relationships as necessary. Seventh step is to refine your design. So for that, you need to analyze your design for errors. Create the tables and add a few records of sample data and see if you can get the results you want from your tables. Make adjustments to the design as needed. The number 8, the last step, is to apply the normalization rules. Apply the data normalization rules to see if your tables are structured correctly. So this is the database designing process to arrive with a good database design. So now we are going step by step through this process. It is a good idea to write down the purpose of the database. Apart from that, it is also should contain how you expect to use it and who will use it. For a small database, for a home-based business, for example, 
you might write something simple like the customer database keeps a list of customer information for the purpose of producing mailing and reports if the database is more complex or is used by many people as often occurs in a corporate setting the purpose could easily be a paragraph or more and should include when and how each person will use the database. The idea is to have a well-developed mission statement that can be referred to throughout the design process. Having such a statement helps you focus on your goals when you make decisions. To find and organize the information required, start with your existing information. For example, you might record purchase orders in a ledger or keep customer information on paper forms in a file cabinet. Gather those documents and list each type of information. If you don't have any existing forms, imagine instead that you have to design a form to record the customer information. So what kind of information you would put on those forms? What fill-in boxes would you create? Identify and list each of these items. For example, suppose you currently keep the customer list on index cards. Examining these cards might show that each card holds a customer name, address, city, state, postal codes, and telephone number. Each of these items represent a potential column in a table. As you prepare this list, don't worry about getting it perfect at first. Instead, list each item that comes to mind. If someone else is will be using the database, ask for their ideas too. You can fine-tune the list later. Next, consider the types of reports or mailings that you might want to produce from the database. For instance, you might want a product sales report to show sales by region or an inventory summary report that shows product inventory levels. You might also want to generate form letters to send to customers that announces a sale event or offers a premium. Design the report in your mind and imagine what it would look like. What information would you place on the report? List each item. Do the same for the form letter and for any other report you anticipate creating. Giving thought to the reports and mailings you might want to create helps you identify items you will need in the database. For example, suppose you give customers the opportunity to opt into or out of periodic email updates and you want to print a listing of those who have opted in. To record that information, you add a send email column to the customer table. For each customer, you can set the field to yes or no. Once you know that a customer wants to receive email message, you will also need to know the email address to which to send them. Therefore, you need to record an email address for each customer. It makes good sense to construct a prototype of each report or output listing and consider what items you will need to produce the report. For instance, when you examine a form letter, a few things might come to mind. If you want to include a proper salutation, for example, the Mr. Mrs. Ms. string that start greeting, you will have to create a salutation item. Also, you might typically start a letter with Dear Mr. Smith rather than Dear Mr. Sylvester Smith, this suggests you would typically want to store the last name separate from the first name. A key point to remember is that you should break each piece of information into its smaller useful parts. In the case of a name, to make the last name readily available, you will break the name into two parts, first name and the last name. By having the customer's last name stored separately, it will help to sort information by last name. In general, if you want to sort, search and calculate based on an item of information, you should put that item in its own field. Think about the questions you might want the database to answer. For instance, where does the best customer lives? 
who is the supplier for your best selling product. Anticipating these questions help you zero in on additional items to record. After gathering this information, you are ready for the next step. To divide the information into tables, choose the major entities. For example, after finding and organizing information for a product sales database, the preliminary list might look like this. The major entities shown here are the products, suppliers, customers and orders. Therefore, it makes sense to start out with these four tables, one for facts about products, one for facts about suppliers, one for facts about customers and one for facts about orders. Although this doesn't complete the list, it is a good starting point. You can continue to refine this list until you have a design that works well. When you first review the preliminary list of items, you might be tempted to place them all in a single table instead of the four shown in the illustration. You should learn here why that is a bad idea. Consider for a moment the table shown in here. In this case, each row contains information about both the product and its supplier. As you can have many products from the same supplier, the supplier name and address information has to be repeated many times. This waste disk space. Recording the supplier information only once in a separate supplier table and then linking that table to the products table is a much better solution. A second problem with this design comes about when you need to modify information about the supplier. For example, suppose you need to change a supplier's address. Because it appears in many places, you might accidentally change the address in one place but forget to change it in the others. Recording the supplier's address in only one place solves this problem. When you design your database, always try to record each fact just once. If you find yourself repeating the same information in more than one place, such as the address for a particular supplier, put that information in a separate table. Finally, suppose there is only one product supplied by Herbo Liquid Limited and you want to delete the product but retain the supplier's name and address information, how would you delete the product record without losing the supplier information? You can't, because each record contains fact about a product, as well as facts about a supplier. You cannot delete one without deleting the other. To keep these facts separate, you must split the table into two. One table for product information, and other table for supplier information. Deleting a product record should delete only the facts about the product, not the facts about the supplier. Once you have chosen the subject that is represented by a table, columns in that table should store facts only about the subject. For instance, the product table should store facts only about the products because the supplier address is a fact about the supplier and not a fact about the product. It belongs in the supplier table. 